Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to FX Maniac again. This is Sayed Mahmoud Amiri and after a very long time, I am back with another Maya tutorial. And uh, as uh, a lot of you guys have been asking for more Maya tutorials, especially for FX, so I decided to do a, a or an FX tutorial for Maya. So uh, in today's video, I'll be showing you guys how to use the Maya Bifrost fluids, which is a really high-end system for uh, creating large-scale like water simulations and stuff. So I'm sure if you search it up on YouTube, you can get a lot of. I mean, it's been used in a lot of projects, and uh, today I'll be showing you guys how to use it basically. So it's it basically consists of of uh, two different parts mainly, uh, liquid and aero. Uh, in today's tutorial, we'll be taking a look at the liquid module or whatever. So I'm going to show you guys. I've actually done a, a video on this, uh, an example video, like a uh, project, um, maybe like two years ago. So this is all done using Bifrost. The blue ones are actually the water and the white particles are the foam, which is emitted from the water so I mean it was crazy this was like 220 gigs of simulation uh, cache size and it took like 48 hours to simulate and then I took a play blast off of the viewport so um, this is kind of like maybe I'll show you guys how to do this in the next tutorial but for today for just for the basics I'm going to do this example using like the water, the foam, and like kind of explaining the basics of a Bifrost liquid. So without further ado, let's get started. So here I'm in a blank scene in Maya. I'm using Maya 2020 right now. So um, let's get started. So basically, uh, you have to have an object to be able to emit liquid or particles from it. So um, I'm going to create a sphere and scale it up and move it up. So here's your object. Then you're going to select your object. Make sure you are on the effects tab in here and then go to Bifrost fluids. And if for some reason it is not showing up, the Bifrost fluids menu is not there, you can go into Windows, uh, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager, and then you're going to go down here and you're going to find Bifrost fluids. So here it is, Bifrost and Bifrost. And you're going to enable all of these and that'll be it. So close this and then we have our object. Then I'm going to select it, go into Bifrost fluids, liquid. And then basically if I click here and make sure you are, if you're going to the uh, preferences for the time, Make sure your playback speed is at play every frame and then save and then go back and play and then your liquid is basically emitting. So that's basically it and it's going to go forever because of the gravity and because we don't have anything for it to collide with. So I'm going to go back and uh, what if I want this liquid to collide with an object? So I'm going to create another object be that anything maybe a text so let's see here i have this 3d text going to modify center pivot and i'm going to scale it down and just move it here so this is it and maybe i can change the text maybe to like effects and uh, just scale it maybe center the pivot and scaled up or Increase the thickness, move it down. So in order for this uh, for this uh, Bifrost liquid to collide with this object, we need to set this as a collider object. So in order to set that, you need to select your object first. Um, it's actually caching in the background. So you need to select your object and then shift select the Bifrost grid and then go into Bifrost fluids, collider. So then what it's going to do is, if I play this back here, make sure you go into the first frame and then play it. What it's going to do is these particles are going to collide with this object. So 
which is really cool. And I'm going to add a plane too. So one plane and then do the same thing. Select the plane and the grid and go into Biofrost Fluids Collider. So it's, it's going to collide with that one too. So you can add as many colliders as you want, but make sure you select them individually. So yeah, and the reason that they're going through the floor is that your floor needs to be thick enough for it to be able to not go through it. So what I'm going to do is just move this down and give it some thickness. Or maybe I'll, I'll delete this uh, plane and I'll just add a cube and scale it up. Make sure you have thickness. That's why it's not working. So scale it up and now it won't go through it. And then we have some options also to, to set that it will not go through. So select this one and then shift select this grid. Go into Biofrost Fluids, Collider, and now they're going to collide. So if I zoom in here, and then if you want to see them better, you can you can select your Bifrost and then go into, here's a, in the liquid shape, we have point as the type, and you can increase the point size to be able to see them properly. So I'm just going to go back and now you can see clearly that they are emitting and they are colliding with the floor and with the object and they're not going through the floor so that is cool but the other thing is uh, they're not colliding continuously you just you have a burst of these particles that are just emitting out and that's it so the thing I'm going to do in order to make it uh, sort of emit continuously and I'm going to set this point size to 2 is that I'm going to go into the Bifrost emitter props in the outliner, which is here, and then enable continuous emission, which is basically going to do what it says. It's going to continuously emit particles. So I'm just going to go back here and then play this. And now you can see that we have our particles continuously emitting from the sphere and colliding with the object and the floor and then when it reaches here it's going to go through the floor so that's that's it so basically here's our our basic fluid simulation using uh, using biofrost so if you take a look at here you can see that the, the particles are not really colliding like uh, closely with the object so whenever you create an object and set it as an emitter uh, as a collider, sorry, for with the Bifrost particles, it creates a Bifrost Collider Prop, which you can select here. But then if you go into the Bifrost Liquid Properties, there are two options to be able to control that. You have the, uh, the Transport uh, Step Adaptivity, which you can double it and it'll work. And here's a little description for it. it controls the number of iterations used to affect the particles along the voxel velocity field and um, and then you have the time stepping so i'm going to make this like 0.5 and the time step adaptivity to 0.2 and then i'm going to go back and now it's going to make the collision of the particles with the object a lot more precise so uh, that's uh, that's i think it uh, for this and then if you want to increase the quality or the voxel size for this to be able to emit more particles you're going to go into the biofrost uh, liquid properties and then you have an option called master voxel size uh, the less you go the more uh, you know the more dense it's going to be but of course it's going to take a lot of time to process so make sure you don't go too too low so for now i'm just going to go to like 0.3 and then i'm going to go back here and then play this and you can see that now we're emitting a lot more particles so and and they are colliding with with the object and with the scene so yeah that, that that's basically it and then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna I'm just going to take this and uh, I will I'll just create a little thing from this so I'm going to extrude this offset this one like this and I'm going to extrude this down down just like this and then I'll just scale it to 
create to be able to create like a room for this. All right, just going to move this up again. Make sure the particles doesn't go out of this area. So that's the thing for that one. And then uh, in this example, I just create an object and rotated it to be able to kind of like create a motion and move the foam particles around so i'm just going to delete this and i'll create a cylinder and move it up so you can just go ahead and rotate this like this and then just uh hit t and subdivision caps to zero and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to scale this up not this, that one. And if I go here, go back. So I'm going to select this uh, object and I'm just going to scale it up a little bit and then go select these two parts and offset them just a little bit and then extrude them out again. Control E and then give them some thickness. That's it. And then in order to create some interesting stuff so I'm just going to select this and shift double click on that one go ahead turn off the key faces together and decrease the offset and then again extrude it a little bit to create these sort of extruded areas and then I'm just going to rotate this so just uh, scale it and then hit uh, make it like 200 frames go ahead increase the timeline and right click set key on the rotation and go into like 200 frames and i'm just going to rotate it like what 400 degrees and now if i play this you can see that it's rotating i mean it should be rotating so yeah it is but i think it's moving very slow and it's not colliding with that because we haven't set it as a collider. So what I'm going to do is go back here and make and set it to like um, 1500. And then I'm just going to set key again. Uh, I think we've messed up the keyframe. So delete these. Go back in here and set this to 1500. And then I'm going to set key again. So think this time is right so now they're rotating but the next thing I, I I should do actually is select this and select this one I'm going to Bifrost and uh, uh, Collider and now the particles should be colliding with that object and it's gonna splash them all over the place if it is like fast enough but I think they are not I mean the motion is not fast enough to be able to kind of like splash it all over the place or maybe it is um, it's I think it's fine but then the next thing that we need to do or I'm going to show you guys is how to emit uh, foam particles from these main particles so what you're gonna do is you're going to basically se select your bifrost and then go into um, bifrost fluids and then go into foam so you created foam and then if you um, play this now you can see some white particles emitting off of these particles and those are basically the foam particles so you, and you can you can increase the amount and everything so if i go back here and select the bifrost container and foam you can increase the max particle count the point size you can see you can differentiate between them like this is foam and that is uh, the main particles maybe I'll, I'll set this to like two now you can see clearly the foam particles that are emitting from the object so I'm going to go back here and maybe I will just um, and there are some other options here which we will going to get uh, the meshing part especially you can in, uh, enable the meshing it's gonna create the mesh which is the ultimate thing you want to simulate this and then you want to mesh it and then you want to light it and render it but in this one in this tutorial I just wanted to show you guys like the the simulation part and some 
basic things about Biofrost. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the liquid properties and set the master volume size to like 0.25. And I am going to take a play blast of this. And when it's done, I'll show you guys how it looks. So I'm going to go right click on the timeline, play blast, uh, 1920 by 1080, scale to one, AVI, save to file, and that's it. So maybe I'll, I'll name it to like um, Bifrost. And then I'll set it play blast. And I'll wait and I'll be back when this is done. All right, so the play blast is finished. And if I play this, you can see that it's looking really cool. The motion of these are just uh, really awesome. You, you can see that the foam is actually take, inheriting the motion of the particles. And it's looking like a big wave of water that are that is kind of moving around in a closed area so yeah that is uh, that is really cool and you can you can you can increase the resolution a lot more but I think for now it's it's just really cool so you, you go here and you can check around the different places so yeah that's that's basically it so um, and there are some other options which um, alongside with the meshing of this which uh, I may get into in another tutorial and I may show you guys how to do this video with the moving character. So this was uh, one which I've basically done a while ago, like two years ago. There's like crazy amount of particles here. You can see that. And I've created a kill, kill plane here. So it's, it basically says that whenever the particles move out of this plane, they're going to be killed because if they don't, then, you know, they're going to take forever to simulate because it would like, tons like thousands and millions of particles so it's going to take a lot of still this took like 220 gigs but it's okay and it's colliding with this so it's looking really cool so maybe i'll show you guys how to do this in the next tutorial but for today's one i think um, uh, we've covered uh, some basics and maybe we'll take a look at the aero part also so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Most of you guys were asking about a Maya FX tutorial, which I'll, uh, um, I will try to do a lot more. I know I haven't uploaded a lot of tutorials in a very long while, but um, I try to do my best and uh, do more. So without uh, me saying a lot of nonsense things, this is going to be the end of today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. hope you learned something from it. Make sure to comment your suggestions and your questions or anything you've missed from the tutorial uh, in the comment section below. Make sure to like the video. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell icon uh, to be able to be notified whenever I upload a new video. And you can also check out my Instagram page for some of my works. So FX with Sayyid. And that's it. And uh, till the next video, enjoy working.